This video is called Picasso and the Girl with a Ponytail. It was the first day of summer. Sylvette and her friends were sitting on the terrace in the sun. Sylvette was so shy that she always sat a little apart, but listened to every word. Have you heard? Picasso is staying right here in Valerius. It's incredible, the most famous artist in the world. Every picture he paints is worth a fortune. I heard he had a huge white car sent from America in exchange for just one painting. Sylvette was very interested. Secretly, she dreamed of becoming an artist. In a suitcase under her bed was a sketchbook full of drawings. All her secrets were locked inside that suitcase, things no one else had ever seen. Suddenly, Sylvette noticed something absolutely amazing. Right in front of her eyes, a beautiful picture had appeared above the terrace wall. Look, shouted her friends, it's Sylvette. Only Sylvette has a ponytail like that. Sylvette hid her face in her hands. She heard a roar of laughter from behind the wall. They all ran to look. They saw a man holding the picture above his head. He was short, but very muscular. He wore a striped shirt, shorts, and a pair of bedroom slippers. It was Picasso. I saw you from all from my studio, he laughed, and I made a sketch. Come on, why don't you visit me? Sylvette was at last inside the door, her heart beating like a drum. The studio was a treasure house, as if the artist had never thrown away a single thing. Every surface was piled with bits and pieces, tins of paint, scraps of wood, strange sculptures, children's toys, broken pots, a cowboy hat, flowers, painted plates, a boomerang, fish bones, a clown's mask, a bird cage, guitars, a bullfighter's sword, and more than anything else, Sylvette saw paintings, hundreds and hundreds of them, each one signed with a single word, Picasso. Picasso was still laughing. He was 73 years old, but acted like a young boy. Now then, he shouted, I will draw one person. Who will it be? One of Sylvette's friends stepped forward quickly. She was very beautiful. You can draw me, Mr. Picasso, she said. I will sit for you. Picasso looked at her quite fiercely. No, he said, you saw my picture outside. I have chosen the girl with the ponytail. Sylvette felt a bit sick. She wanted to run straight out of the door, but Picasso was very kind. It's all right, he said gently. You can trust me, come and sit down. Sylvette is too shy, teased her friends, and too dreamy as well. That's good, laughed the artist. Then we will get along, because Picasso is a dreamer too. Come back another time, he called to Sylvette's friends. Sylvette and I have work to do. Picasso looked carefully at Sylvette. She was shivering. Here, borrow this coat, he said. Then he began to draw. The first drawing was slow and careful, a delicate pencil study. The second picture was larger. Sylvette as still and nervous as a wild deer. Then Picasso began to work faster and faster. The pictures grew larger and more strange. Picasso was enjoying himself. At the end of the day, Sylvette ran home. She took out her sketchbook, but her head was spinning and none of her drawings came out right. The next morning, Sylvette returned nervously to the studio. Perhaps Picasso had forgotten her, but he opened the door and grinned at her like a schoolboy. Little by little, the paintings became more daring and more extraordinary. Little by little, Sylvette became less shy. Picasso seemed to change every moment, just like his pictures. He was as proud as a king. He painted like a magician, and yet he liked to dress up and play games. Sometimes he put on funny hats or masks to make Sylvette laugh. He told her about the animals he had owned, dog, a, co a goat who allowed him to sleep indoors, and a bad-tempered monkey. Once he even kept an owl. Of course, Picasso painted them all. All through the summer, Picasso created pictures of Sylvette and sculptures in cardboard and metal. As the work became bigger and bolder, she became braver too. Sylvette's father had left home when she was small, but for that summer, Picasso was like a father to her. 
Shy Sylvette with the most famous painter in the world. It was a real fairy tale. One day, Sylvette plucked up her courage and showed Picasso her secret sketchbook. She told him about her dream of becoming an artist. Picasso didn't laugh or tease her. That is good, he said loudly, but you have to be brave and learn to let go. Look at me. When I'm angry, I make angry pictures. When I'm sad, my pictures are sad too. And when I'm happy, my painting is full of joy. Even my dreams are in my work. There can be no secrets in painting. That afternoon, a photographer came to the studio. Sylvette hated having her photo taken. She wanted to hide away. Then she saw Picasso making funny faces at the camera and suddenly it didn't seem so bad. The man took dozens of pictures of Picasso and Sylvette behind the paintings. Her friends couldn't believe their eyes. Shy Sylvette on the front cover of a famous magazine. And before long, every magazine wanted a picture of Picasso's new model. Girls in Paris and London were even copying her hairstyle. They all wanted a Sylvette ponytail. Sylvette cut out all the photographs and locked them carefully in her suitcase. Sometimes Picasso worked late into the night. Once Sylvette saw him behind the studio in the middle of a pile of garbage hunting for interesting objects. The richest artists who ever lived made sculptures from old junk. Sylvette had seen some of them in magazines, a baboon with two toy cars for a face, a bull's head made from a bicycle seat and handlebars. Sylvette loved watching Picasso work. Paintings, sculptures, and painted pots poured from him like a volcano. At last, Picasso started a huge sculpture of Sylvette with old pieces of pottery for arms and legs. It had a long neck and a round bag just like hers, but the head was so strange, Sylvette didn't think it looked like her at all. As she watched, Sylvette had a sad feeling that this would be the last time Picasso would use her as his model. Since the day on the terrace, she had been in his work. Soon, it would all fade like the summer. While Picasso worked, Sylvette began telling him her secrets. She talked about the time her father had gone away. Sylvette kept a special picture of him in her suitcase, but had never told anyone how hurt and lonely she had been. Picasso looked up at her with burning black eyes. It is very hard when people move apart, he said, but try to remember, with every door that closes, a new door opens. It began to grow dark. As they looked at the sculpture, Sylvette told Picasso a secret that she had locked away and tried to forget. She talked about the man who had come to live with her mother, a loud, unpleasant bully. Sylvette was sometimes so unhappy that she wanted to run away. Picasso looked at her kindly. Then he jumped up. You have given me an idea, he said. I knew something was missing from the sculpture. Sylvette must hold something in her hand. Picasso began searching through bits and pieces on a table. He tipped out a drawer onto the floor. At last, he found what he wanted. In her hand, Picasso announced, Sylvette holds a key. He pushed a big iron key into the hand of the sculpture. Sylvette looked puzzled. She has a key because she has so many secrets locked away. Picasso fixed the key in place with some plaster, but she also has a key, listen, Sylvette, to open new doors. Then Picasso reached out his hand, white with plaster, and gently touched Sylvette's face. Look, it is finished, the girl with a key. Now, Sylvette, I would like to give you a present. You may choose any picture you like. Perhaps it will help open some doors for you. When Sylvette stepped out of Picasso's studio for the last time, she was carrying that very first picture. She held it carefully because the paint on the signature was not quite dry. For Sylvette from Picasso, a beautiful picture of a girl with a ponytail. After that summer, Sylvette began to paint as bravely as Picasso had taught her. Gradually, she became a well-known artist herself. When the picture Picasso gave her was sold, Sylvette had enough money to pay for a beautiful apartment of her very own with a space for a real studio high in the top floor with views from across the whole of Paris. Sylvette ran up the stairs. She turned the key and opened the door. And this is a photograph of Sylvette 
and Pablo Picasso. And then there's some information on Pablo Picasso in the back of the book. Pablo Picasso was born in Spain in 1881, the son of an art teacher. He could draw before he could speak, and by the time he was 12, he had started to produce astonishingly skillful oil paintings. Throughout his long life, his output in every medium was matched only by the extraordinary range of his styles. <clears throat> From the delicate etchings to massive and terrifying paintings like Guernica, Picasso's work was always pioneering and brutally honest. Picasso bought a house in Valerius in the south of France. Here in 1954, he caught sight of a beautiful shy teenager, Sylvette David. In a typically frenzied burst of creative energy, Picasso produced more than 40 images of the girl with a ponytail who became an international icon. This was a turbulent time for Picasso. He had recently separated from Francois Galat and met his last wife, Jacqueline Roque, at a, at a pottery in Valerius. For one summer, Sylvette was Picasso's platonic muse. He always treated her with kindness and respect. The following year, Picasso had a big exhibition of his Sylvette paintings in Paris. Visitors were amazed to see how the work had grown from the first delicate drawing to the sculpture of the girl with a key. But it didn't stop there. A few years later, two concrete sculptures of Sylvette, each as big as a house, were built to Picasso's designs in Holland and New York. Picasso produced more than 30,000 original works. He died in 1973, aged 92, one of the most famous artists in the world. Sylvette David, now Lydia Corbet, lives and paints in the west of England. Her beautiful pictures and wood sculptures can be seen at the Francis Kyle Gallery in London. And that is Picasso and the Girl with a Ponytail by Lawrence Anholt.